So I wanted to take you through uh, how I prepare uh, myself and sort of anything else before I start a tutorial um, and actually it's a very very similar process to when I'm preparing to create a new um, commission piece um, so we're going to assume that we've we've chosen the photograph um, I have got some videos on on choosing photos um, you know good and good and, and bad photos um, but um, I'm going to assume that we've actually made a choice um, this is actually one of my members dogs um, she's a flat coat retriever she's called summer beautiful beautiful dog and um, this is actually a professional photograph which I have got permission for so that's one of the the big things when you're um, taking on a tutorial or a commission or, or an original piece of art or anything make sure you have permission to use that photograph it's very very easy to get into the habit of just going on to google and i did it when i first started drawing i had no idea that there were you know things like copyright and you just go onto google and you just go oh it's on google so i can just use that photo well you know actually it's a, it's illegal to do that you need to have full permission um if you get sent a a professional photograph if you're doing a commission um, you must ask to have uh, full permission from the photographer to be able to use the photo it's not good enough for the owner to say oh well I paid for the photo shoot so it's mine it isn't the copyright sits with the photographer so that's that's the first thing so this is a professional photo from a professional photo shoot it's a really nice photo it's not you know crazily detailed I've got this up at 300% I may well look at it in um, gigapixel or Lightroom uh, just to see if I can get a little bit more detail in there to be honest I quite like this amount of detail I quite like the fact that there are some areas that, that are relatively smooth um, there's some really nice darks in there and there's some really really nice lights so that's one of the things that I would um, have a look at first of all what's what are the values like what is the contrast of the photo is it going to make a nice drawing if it's very flat so uh when i talk about flat um let me just give you an idea um we're talking about if an image is that's not really done very much is it well yeah you can see there actually can you see how i've just kind of flattened the contrast um, so if I look at the preview, you can see that it kind of your dark sort of disappear a little bit um, and it's not quite as contrasty. Um, it's not bad, actually, but I prefer this where the darks are really, really nice and dark. And that is what's going to give you a super, super uh, portrait. Um, however, you can do some tweaking if you want to. There are all sorts of different programs um, that you can manipulate. You can change the color. You can change your, um, you know, the values. You can change the contrast. You know, um, there are free programs. I tend to use Photoshop. I'm in Photoshop now and I tend to use Lightroom. So I'm just going to pop this into Lightroom and just show you how I um, you know sort of have a look at the color and see if I can just tweak it slightly so that I can get a better representation to draw from okay so I've got summer now in Lightroom this is summer here um, this is the original photo I'm just going to go into the develop part up here and I'm going to go to where it says why why down here just this is just means that I've got the before and the after and it means that I can actually see what's going on I'm just going to blow her up a little bit Not quite as much as that I think that'll be fine um to be honest it's a professional photo so I, I, I probably won't make any changes at all to this where you can see these little blue areas here that means that there's there's no detail in there it's just pure black um, you can switch that on if you need to and where there's too much white it will go uh, red so um, I've got this set of tools here this is Lightroom that I use I have a, a buy a bundle um, of the Adobe products so I think I pay nine euros a month for Photoshop and Lightroom which is is perfect for what and I use them a lot so it's, it's a really really good bundle to have um, Lightroom I find is the best one for making image edits as in color um, exposure all of that type of thing I find it a much more intuitive program to do that in Lightroom so I can come into here and I can look at the temperature so sometimes you'll get a black black dogs particularly they can have quite a blue cast now 
I've drawn a, a lot of blue dogs in my in my life as an artist, <laughs> and I see an awful lot of blue dogs um, <laughs> coming from other people as well. Blue is a great colour to use in black, but you don't want to overdo it. Um, this actually, she is um, she's got some beautiful colours in here. I can see some purples, I can see some blues, but she is predominantly black she doesn't look blue now if i just tweaked the temperature a little bit can you see how it would be very easy to take a photo like this um, receive a photo like this and use this as your main reference um, and use an awful lot of blues in there and it will look lovely but it will look like a blue dog and you can see definitely how actually having it more uh, less blue actually it would be uh, predominantly more yellow is going to get your uh, black looking blacker so if we have this image here and we're thinking oh gosh hang on a second that's a little bit too blue all we do is we take the temperature the other way and we bring it into that warmer space there that yellowy space that's obviously far too much but you can see how when we go from blue through into the yellow we get more of a um a black but if you take it too far it's going to go sort of like a greeny color um which shows me that actually what what we've got here is quite nice i could just take it back a little bit actually to make it sort of slightly warmer um i quite like that you can see the difference now there's still quite a lot of blue in here but i quite like the sort of the the, the blacky color that we've got in there too um and then we've got the, the that's the temperature so cool or warm and then at the bottom you've got the tint so you've got you can have the put the green tint in or you can put the pink tint in again you know you can just it's like a sliding scale and you can just have a play around with that um you know that there has got a little bit more of that pinky color in and actually i quite like that as well um you know and um i probably yeah i'll probably leave it at, at that um, I think that works quite nicely. We haven't changed the colour of our eyes particularly. We've just changed a little bit of the temperature of the dog. So I just reduce that back down. Um, and there we've got, it's almost like a more natural looking looking black. Um, you know, whereas this one is, look, is now looking quite blue, uh, funnily enough. And this, you know, her fur here is looking a little bit um, sort of more, more ready coloured um to be honest i think i'm just going to go with the um uh you know the the original photograph which is which is absolutely fine um okay so once we've decided on the temperature and the tint and everything and we've we've had a bit of a play around and a tweak um we can then go oh, well do you know actually i need to brighten up some areas i can't it could be that you can't see what's going on so particularly when you come with something like a nose it's like oh i can't really see what's going on in there so i might do a few different um, I might have a few different photographs. One that's the, the one that's the, the perfect photo that I'm going to kind of take all of the, the colour and the values from. And then I might have a couple that are either really overexposed or really underexposed so I can kind of see a little bit more about what's going on, particularly when it comes to noses, the shaping. Now, my finished piece, I want to have this lovely feel for the nose where you can't see a huge amount of detail. But you might want to just get a little bit more detail in there so you get your line art, um, you know, in there correctly. So I'd come up to the masking area here. Um, I'm going to go with a brush. Um, I'm going to create a new mask. Um, and it's going to be brush. And then I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller there. You can see on the screen. Um, and it's going to be green when I put it on. So I'm just going to bring that in here. Just kind of bring it over the top of the nose area there. And then I'm just going to come into the exposure and I'm going to um, just lift that exposure a little bit. And can you see how now we don't want to draw it like this. We want to draw it like this. We want it to be really nice and dark. But now that I've overexposed this area, I can actually see the shape. So I can get the shapes in there and then I can just get the dark in there on the top. Um, again, because I've still got this mask, I can kind of go into her eye area there if I wanted to. Just paint it in and that's going to overexpose that as well. Obviously, that we don't want that to happen. Um, and if there's anywhere else where I'm thinking, oh gosh, I could just... Just do with seeing a little bit more of what's, um, you know, what's going on in there. Um, you know, this is a really, really good tool to be able to just dabble around with. And then I would save this image as a different image so that I can go into there and go, right, I've got the nose here. I might use this particular image to do my line art from so I can actually see what's going on um, in those really dark areas. Could be that her eyes are really, really dark and I just want to lighten them up a little bit again so I can see what's going on. So I get the shaping and everything correct um okay and then we just put we just click on done um 
I'm just going to reset it, to be honest. So we're back to where, where we were. Uh, you've then got all sorts of other bits and pieces. So you can um, you can come into here and just really up up her highlights. This is taking sort of like those really light areas there um, and just kind of increasing those highlights. Uh, the shadows, again, you can kind of bring those shadows out a little bit. We don't want to be drawing a, a you know a piece like that, but you can see much more now of her the hair structure, particularly around here. Um, or we can darken them up, and it depends on the photo that you've got. Um, we can make the whites whiter, and you can see the red appearing here where this is just going bright white. And we can either lift the blacks, or we can take the blacks, and you can see that that just takes it all down to black. Um, but we can lift the blacks up a little bit. Again, it just kind of lightens it overall, um, which which actually, you know, um, may give us a better portrait rather than it being super, super, super dark. Um, you've then got these areas here, which are texture, clarity, dehaze, uh, vibrance and saturation. And to be honest, I wouldn't really use these um, in a photograph. Um, I might come in and I might take a photo of my finished piece and I might edit it in Lightroom so that it looks like the original drawing. A lot of the time when we take a, um, a photograph of our drawings, it picks up on digital noise. So we get a lot of grain in there that we don't really want. Um, so the texture, you kind of bring the texture off so it goes a little bit flat and uh, smooth or you'd bring texture in now you will see particularly in the clarity bit so clarity again it kind of smooths it out you'll see a lot of people taking like landscapey photos and um, you know to give them some real edge and drama they'll use clarity to really really push the the um, the darks and the lights so you get like loads of that texture coming through um, again I, that's not what I want for a portrait and then you've got dehaze as well which I, I'm never really sure what the dehaze does um, but you can have a play around with that as well and then you've got vibrance and saturation so vibrance is just going to kind of pick up pick up on different colors and make them just that little bit more vibrant so these two are they are they are pretty sort of similar with the saturation we just go for far more saturated color and then again we take the color back out um so you know you might want to change those you might it's it's up to you what you want to do um i don't tend to uh, to touch the the tone curve you can have a play around with that as well and then again here we can kind of take specifics out so if you were thinking you wanted some of those purples to be a little bit but you can see there if we put more um take purple out or put purple in you can kind of see the difference there as well um and the same with sort of blues you know you can see it kind of making a difference there too so it, it's up to you what you what you um what you want to do um and then this this is a quite good one down here particularly for uh, if you've taken a photograph and your your photo is really really noisy as in it's got a lot of grain in it and you can actually take out noise reduction there so it, it kind of smooths it again um and this works really really nicely for um photographs of your work um you know and um yeah so that's how i would uh color correct my piece and i'd then save it um i'd i'd obviously if i was making some quite drastic colors uh color changes or um changes in value i would then put it past my client and then i'd come back into um photoshop obviously with my uh with my drawing and what i would then start to do is really have a think about what surface i'm going to draw it on um i wouldn't necessarily start well i definitely wouldn't swatch out any colors um because because i don't do any swatching um i know a lot of people do do swatching and you know they find it useful i i and i'll be completely honest here i find it a total and utter waste of time um because how can you possibly know what your colors are going to be when you've layered them all on you know you might go oh i'm going to use a bit of blue and a little black in here but i know that anyway i know that i'm going to use blues i know i'm going to use reds i know i'm going to use yellows in there and pinks and whatever so it is just not something that i would uh, i would do and and that's not be being ar arrogant or big-headed or anything like that it's just how how my brain works i i can't bear swatching um so <laughs> um so if i do swatch anything for you you're very lucky uh, so yeah, so then I would start to think about my, the paper that I would use or the surface that I would use. So, um, and this is a question that comes up an awful lot, actually, you know, how do you choose a surface for your portrait? And the, the, there isn't really an answer. Um, my, my, I think my first answer would be, what's your favorite surface to draw on? 
and do it on that um, because you're always going to enjoy it. If you've got a favourite surface, you're always going to enjoy drawing on that particular surface. If you've got a few surfaces that you use, so me, if this is going to be a tutorial, so, um, you know, I tend to draw on pastel mat, uh, drafting film or um, the dreaded hot press uh, paper. Um, and I have tutorials on all, all three of those. There's also some other ones, you know, black paper and all of that kind of thing. But there's three main papers that I would choose to, to draw on. And actually the hot press I don't often do uh, pieces on there unless they're sort of quite small studies. Um, so it's really a toss up between pastel mat and drafting film. And then um, and then the question will probably be um, for a tutorial. Well, you know, how many tutorials have I done recently that's on pastel mat and how many have I done if uh, on drafting film? So maybe we're going to do pastel mat this time or maybe there's a certain technique that people have been talking about in the groups and they're saying, oh, I really wish I could do this. No, I'm really struggling with that. So that's something for me to have a think about, you know, what people are struggling with and if they're actually asking particular things within my groups. Um, so the other uh, reason I would make a choice for a particular surface is if I'm actually working on a surface at the moment. So if I'm currently drawing a piece on um, drafting film, then a lot of the likelihood is that I will carry on working on drafting film and exactly with pastel mat as well. Um, you know, so and then once you kind of choose what you're going to be using for this one, um, this one, my feeling is it's going to be pastel mat. I want quite a nice I have a vision in my head of it being quite a nice soft piece. We've got those lovely dark darks. We've got these lovely soft ears in here where with pastel mat, I can get that lovely softness. Drafting film is beautiful. And it's brilliant for detail, but I don't want her to look um Drafting film can almost look like a, like a photograph or a digital drawing and I want this one to look a little bit softer. I want it to look like a really sort of classic portrait rather than super, super hyper detailed. Um, so I'm going to go with pastel mat on this one. And I was kind of um, thinking about do I go dark grey, do I go white? Um, and with this one, my feeling is that white would actually be, um, would, would actually showcase her really nicely. Plus we can, we can really concentrate on the true colors that are going in. So we're not having to kind of counter, um, any sort of color with that, the, the dark gray that's in there. Um, you know, if we're using something that is, so I've just done a lion cub in uh, one of my workshops and it was a very yellowy based lion. So I used the sand coloured pastel mat, which actually worked really, really well. Um, and we didn't then have to put too many layers down because um, of that sandy colour at the back. It kind of showed through and it, and it helped. Um, but with this one, I want to uh, I want to do her on the on the white pastel mat. Um, it's all going to be and then I kind of think about, OK, so what are the lessons that I want to teach in this particular piece? Um and if you've listened to any of my tutorials, you'll know that I don't just go this colour, this colour, this colour. You know, I go into real depth about why I'm using a colour, why I'm using a particular technique, how, um, you know, you can expect it to look like this, but that's OK because it's part of the process. All of that type of stuff, um, you know, will come in. I'm going to be doing her um, her nose and her, her tongue as a um, a separate tutorial as a focus um tongues are really really funny things to draw and i put, she's got quite a textured tongue here and i actually prefer to kind of get a little bit of that texture leave a little bit of that texture out um because it can look a bit sort of too much on a drawing um so the lesson that i'm going to be teaching on the, the this muzzle area here are the fact that it is absolutely okay to go really really dark so you can hardly see any of the details and it doesn't matter because we as human beings will kind of fill those details in anyway it's like we don't have to put every single tiny bit of fur in there you know it's much nicer to have areas where it's totally smooth without any detail um, and then of course we've got all of those dark elements in there too um, this particular one I want to try out some um, some unusual color um, choices so we're going to be having some yellows in there so I'm going to be glazing some yellow in on the top here which is going to give a really nice light on the top of her head um, and I'm going to be bringing some pinks and everything into her black fur as well um, you know and then of course we've got all of this texture going on down here so this is going to be light over dark it's about getting those nice smooth transitions of color so there's an awful lot to kind of think about when uh, when I'm preparing for 
you know a commission or a or a tutorial so the next stage is i've i've kind of color corrected i've approved the the photo with my client um, i've got an idea of what uh, surface i'm going to be using i don't really i don't really have any idea about the colors just yet i may what tends to happen with me is I'll have images that start running through my head of different parts of the dog. So when we were coming down here and I was talking about all of this lovely texture in my head, I've got pictures of me either drawing or using pencils or, you know, whatever, kind of getting all of this gorgeous dark in and then using like um, a, a light grey pablo to kind of bring these little sort of strands of, of light in. So this will all be probably be very, very dark to begin with. And then the light will come in over the top, which gives that lovely texture. So I've already got ideas in my head as to all of the techniques I'm going to be using. Um, you know, so I'm kind of fully prepared when I start a piece. I've already visualized a huge amount of it. So, um, yeah, so I choose the photo, agree it with the client. Uh, and then the next step is to create the line art. And this is the line art that I've created. So it's quite, um, there's actually quite a lot of detail in this. And it's, it's because I'm, I'm doing this as a tutorial. So I'm actually bringing in some of these lines in her ears. Usually uh, I'm not that fussed about bringing too much detail in, to be honest. It, it can be really quite distracting, um, you know, so I just kind of bring in the, 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 the basic shapes um, and, um, and, and try not to bring too much detail in. This one, for me, this is quite detailed, um, you know, and, and I probably will either remove some of these marks um you know or just or just ignore them a, a lot of the time when we put these marks in and then we come to we come to kind of color it in as some people like to say um you're like what's this mark and what's this mark and what's this i have no idea what this is so i tend to work with landmarks so i'll know that my eyes are in my nose is in and i'll know that they're correct and then i can kind of figure out where everything else is going to go um and it makes me laugh so much when people say oh you're just going to color it in yeah, she's going to colour in the lines. Um, you know, and this line art was created on an iPad. Um, so it's a digital, uh, a digital line art. So I can just save this as a JPEG and then my students can pick this up and they can either use it or they can create their own, um, you know, and it's entirely up to them. When I, I when I actually uh, use this to, to put the line art down onto my surface, I probably will leave quite a lot of these lines out, particularly on the ears, because we just don't need them. We just don't need them. I'm, I'm not going to be following all of the, the, the actual curls and everything anyway. So, you know, I'll probably leave those out. Um, and then um, the next thing to do is to think about size. I'm very, very laissez-faire about sizes. And I know that people get a bit, little bit um, sort of, um, you know, pent up about getting things absolutely perfect. I am so not a perfect person. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut a piece of pastel mat board um, probably for this one, it's going to be a half a half sheet, so it's going to be uh, thirty five by fifty, um, and then I'll just put I'll I'll I save this onto a memory stick um, as a JPEG, and um, I pop it into my projector, and I just project my image down onto the size of fifty by thirty five, and I'll just position it nicely within there. Um, what I might do is I might do a couple of line arts, so a small one, a medium sized one, and a large one, have them all on the memory stick so that I can go, oh, that's a bit too big, let's go a little bit smaller, because it, it's easier for me to do that than move my projector up and down, um, you know, because I have to undo handles and all of that type of stuff. So, and then I project her onto my, um, onto my pastel mat, and I will spend around five minutes <laughs> um, whacking all of the lines in, because that's my least favourite part. Um, so I just spend, yeah, and it literally is about five minutes. Um, you know, just sort of scribbling all of these lines down. I know some people take hours and hours and hours to put their line arts down and I just, you know, and then I always regret it afterwards. And I think, wow, we should take a little bit more care. So I knew exactly what this line was. Um, but I whack that line art in and then, um, and then I make a start on, uh, you know, I always start with the eyes. This one, I may well start with her muzzle and her tongue because I want to get this uh, focus tutorial out. So I may well start with that area first. Um, and, um, 
yeah, that's 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 about it. That's kind of how I prepare for uh, for a tutorial um, and and also for a commission because I I work from a line art now on commissions as well rather than projecting a, a photograph. It's it's much easier and quicker just to have those lines um, sitting there. So uh, I don't know whether that was useful or not. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm I'm sure that you have found this incredibly enlightening and useful. <laughs> <laughs> just trying my positivity out on everything um so um yeah so I, I hope that's been um you know a useful exercise just to kind of see my thought process behind choosing a photo not necessarily choosing a photo but working with a photo manipulating it a little bit if you need to do and then the thought process around the surfaces and and all of that kind of stuff um so yeah thank you for listening mm-hmm.